Greetings, fellow Earthlings and viewers across the World Wide Web. This is Tune 215. And right now, we're in the state of Pennsylvania. We're currently in the city of Philadelphia. Today, we're going to be doing a virtual tour of the Fair Hill Hood here in North Philadelphia. We're at 6 in Glenwood Ave. We're traveling southbound on 6th Street. I'm gonna make this left hand turn on Westmoreland. We're gonna work our way closer to Fairhill. We're approaching Fifth Street. We're at Fifth and Westmoreland. We're passing Cornwall Street, the 500 block of Cornwall on my left hand side. I'm gonna make a right hand turn on Ontario Street. So right now we're near the upper part of Fairhill. I've documented Fairhill over possibly two dozen times. And I usually try to enter Fairhill through all different points of entrance rather than starting the tour at the same point of interest every time. So I have not entered through this point in a long time. So hence why we're almost at the edge of Fairhill. Gonna make this right hand turn. We're in Ontario, passing Orkney Street. Now we're passing the 3300 block of Lawrence Street on my right. Passing 4th and Ontario Street. Now we're passing the 3400 block of Oriana. Now we're in the neighborhood where a few years ago, I would say maybe six, seven years ago, give or take, there was a young man in his 20s. Uh, he was discovered to have been manufacturing explosives. Probably less than that, I would say five years ago. Cause it was around the time of the lockdown. The block is on my right hand side. I'll drive through it just for the fun of it. And I've talked about this in the past, but it just, a light bulb went on and I remember that they said that he was manufacturing explosives in his grandmom's basement. And when they interviewed her, she's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> she's like, I didn't know. And it's like, wow. And I think he had like a whole lab in the basement. And the thing is that made it even worse. We're on American and Ontario. What made it even worse was that there's a school like 20 feet away from them. An, an elementary school right here. We're about to make a right on this block there. This was the block that it took place on. At the end of the block on my right hand side. I don't remember the exact house. There was a new segment on it. It was one of the last two houses or possibly this third one right here. Maybe the first one coming up on. Wow, Pajo, extreme Pajo. Or one of the last two, give me a second, Pajo. Yeah, it was one of these last three houses. I think it was probably like either the second or the last one right here on the corner. But the funny part is, is it was not so funny. There's a school right across the street. So, you know, you would have probably received some heavy consequences just getting caught on a normal day. But the fact that it was so close to a school zone, I think that changes the dynamic of it. That was around the time they were blowing up the ATMs and taking money and all of that. I don't know if you guys remember, 
but they were blowing up ATMs in Philadelphia and they were cleaning them out for money. Hundreds of ATMs all throughout the city were just getting blown up back to back. It looks like somebody got a CB radio or CB, it's CB? I think it's CB. I think it looked like somebody got a CB antenna on top of their roof. Or maybe, a, a, what's, what's that called, a, a ham radio? I don't know, I'm, I'm not too familiar with that subject matter. But on my right hand side, it's a huge antenna on top of someone's house. Some people are into that hobby. They like to talk to people from all around the world. Why he just ate it and she was trying to go and she looked at him like he was crazy. We're gonna make this right hand turn on the 3500 block of American Street. I don't even think I was about to turn before that white pole. I was supposed to turn after the white pole. They just added these white poles here a couple years ago, like two or three years ago. on American. We went straight earlier when I showed you guys that block where the explosives were in the basement. Um, now we're traveling eastbound again on Ontario. We're passing Phillip Street. We're at 2nd and Ontario. And they started putting speed bumps on 2nd Street. 2nd Street is a pretty fast-paced street, or it used to be a lot more fast-paced when I was younger. The street that we're crossing over now. However, they put speed bumps because about, I would have to say, two and a half years ago, closer to three years, there was an older gentleman, probably in his 60s. He was dragged. He was hit by a minivan and dragged about a block or two. And the person hit and ran, and they kept going, and they took his life. And I believe he was deaf, meaning that he couldn't hear. So I think that was partial. You know, maybe he tried, tried to cross the street, and it was nighttime. We're at Master in Ontario, and he couldn't hear. So maybe the car, I don't know, he couldn't hear the engine or something, but they hit him, and they just dragged him. I don't know if they ever apprehended or caught the person that, that uh, did it, but... Since then, they put a bunch of speed bumps on 2nd Street. The problem with speed bumps is what I've noticed, and I've discussed this in the past often, not amongst you guys, but amongst my little circle. Um, basically, the speed bumps, they're a traditional speed bump, right? But they don't really slow down cars that are stock height. So if it's an SUV, if it's a truck, if it's a regular car that is at standard stock height, they just fly right over the speed bumps. We're passing Lee Street. They fly right over the speed bumps with ease. The only thing that the speed bump slows down is a lowered vehicle, which is already driving slow, mind you. Most lowered vehicles, they drive slow. Lowered in the sense of they put aftermarket suspension, big rims, they lower their car, just for stylization purposes, just for looks, we're at A Street, A in Ontario. This was a real popping corner in, in its heyday. 
But the only thing speed bumps slow down is lowered vehicles, which are already traveling slow because half of them can't even get over the speed bump. But the cars that are like regular stock height, like the ones on my left, the trucks, the regular, all these cars we're passing, they see a speed bump, they fly over it with speed. If anything, they go faster. So I don't think the speed bumps work as effective as they thought it was going to work. Like they thought it was going to slow everyone down. No, it doesn't it slow everyone down. Some people don't care about the speed bump. The ones who suffer are the ones with lowered cars who were already driving low and slow and cruising. Because most people with lowered cars, they don't speed because there's potholes. So they want to take care of their vehicle. Gentlemen, sir, would you like to go? Would you like to go, sir? You want to cross? Go ahead, buddy. No? Maybe? No? You got OCD? Okay, so these random people are going to go. They said, all right, well, I'm uncertain what he wants to do. I was giving him the right away, but... Okay, I'm going to go around him. We're passing Water Street. I can go up water, but I've been through there in the past. Let's start working our way down towards Lower Fairhill. We're at Front and Westmoreland. That's the old police station on my right-hand side. I did a tour inside of it. I believe that's the old 25th district. Right in the middle of the hood, smack dab in the middle of the hood. Yeah, so those speed bumps are actually backwards. I could have swore a couple of years ago there was a bunch of infrastructure money that was granted to take care of the infrastructure of America, the roads, the roadways. And I'm not sure if you've been paying attention to my 2024 virtual tours, but some of these roads are a joke. They've been like this for ages. And when they do fix a road, six months later, they break the road open for some sort of plumbing to happen under the road. And then they patch it up poorly, and then it just continues to spread, the damage spreads. We're passing Waterloo. I'm gonna make this left-hand turn on Masher Street. We could have kept on going straight, but we're gonna make a left. We're gonna take Masher downwards. We're at Allegheny and Masher. On the 3200 block of Masher. Now from this intersection we're at right now, we're about, I would say five to eight minutes away from Kensington and Allegheny, which I'm sure you guys are very familiar with. It needs no announcement. But if we go left on Allegheny Avenue in about five minutes or so, depending on traffic, we'll hit k and Kensington and Allegheny. We're passing Wishart. We crossed over Allegheny. Now we're at Lippincott, Lippincott and Masher. We want to continue to travel Southbound on Masher. I'm gonna make this left on Clearfield Street. Passing Waterloo, the 3000 block of Waterloo. Now we're passing Howard, we don't have a stop sign there. Okay, 
We're gonna cross over Front Street. Front Street's where the 57 bus runs. We're passing Lee Street. And now we're passing Water Street. Approaching Swanson Street. And then after Swanson, you have A Street. We're gonna make a right on A Street, but make note that after A Street, there's Ella, and then after Ella, there's B Street. B Street is the border that separates the Fairhill neighborhood from Kensington. So Kensington is to our left, eastbound to our left. We're traveling southbound. In front of us on our right is westbound, behind us is northbound. That's upper Kensington to our left, literally, B Street separates the two neighborhoods, so. This park right here, surprisingly, there's not as much foot activity out here, which is, I guess that's on the plus side. Foot activity meaning there used to be a lot of people using substances out in the open. Laying against the fence, laying across, you know, where the park is at, laying on the side of this building on my right. It looks like they're rehabbing this building on my right, too. They're repurposing it. They put new gates on the windows. They pressure washed the building. They installed new windows. That was an abandoned factory on my right-hand side. So we're at Tusculum. I'm gonna cross over Tusculum. I just came off of A Street. I'm gonna make this left hand turn and then we're gonna come up Swanson. Swanson is in front of us. We're just gonna go around the block to come up it. There's a, a railroad track on my left. I feel like I'm on a waterbed. You would get seasick if you had a weak stomach. The guy's sparring with the shopping cart. The guy on my left, he was sparring with the shopping cart. We're on Swanson Street. I lost a family member on this block before. He was gunned down. I believe he was about 21 years old. I was probably like 16, 17 when that happened. That that girl smacking them both with a stick. The girl, the little girl, she was smacking both those little boys with, with, with a stick. I guess she was like the big sister or something. She was reprimanding them, giving them corporal punishment. All right, let's make this left-hand turn. Passing Water Street. We had other blocks that we can go through on my left, but the terrain is so rough that I don't really don't feel like going through them at this moment. Some of these blocks haven't been fixed in ages. <coughs> I told this story before. You guys probably heard it. The OG viewers probably heard it, but I'm just gonna say it for um, people who never heard it. This intersection right here on my left and my right, this is Front Street we're crossing. There was never a stop sign there. They never had a stop. There was a female who she was crossing the street. She was an older woman. She was a mother of, I think she had several kids. And they hit her. They hit her. Let's make this left on Hope Street. Somebody hit her. Somebody, while she was crossing the street, and they took her life. 
And since then, I believe, um, I remember like the month after it happening, the family, they were out there with signs telling everyone to slow down and whatnot. And since then, they installed a stop sign there. So as you can hear, there's a lot of reactiveness, not proactiveness. So when you're proactive, if the city is proactive, they address a lot of these issues before something happens, right? Because you're proactive. You're gonna do it ahead of time. You're not gonna wait for something to happen. But instead, they're reactive. They wait till something happens and then they react to what happens. So a lot of these situations that I mentioned from speed bumps to stop signs and all sorts of things have been put in place because things have happened. Not because just as a safety measure, but because something has happened. This block back in the day, I remember being a little boy. I remember being probably six, seven years old, eight years old, driving through this block with my father. And we had some family that they lived on the block behind us. Let's just say they were players in the neighborhood. They were major players. And we used to visit them and upon leaving from their property, me and my pop used to drive through here. And I remember seeing, I say this again, I'm gonna keep saying it again and again and again, because the OGs who know about it know what I'm talking about. The original people, even people older than me, because I'm, I'm 35 years young. There's people that's older than me that can recall this better than, than I can, because I was a youngster when I used to experience it. But it was like, um, I would say, picture every, seven to 12 feet on my left and every seven to 12 feet on my right, a group of five, six, several different guys. And they were all walking up to your car window, screaming out what do you, you know, screaming out what they had and, and, and what you wanted. So they would name their substances. And, and I'm talking about this block probably had 60 people on it. I'm, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but every other couple houses was people outside and they were selling their own stuff, illegal stuff. And it, and it was like a, it was, it was almost like a drive through They'll walk up to your window, see what you wanted. You roll down your window, they'll make the sale and boom. So I remember when we used to come through here, I, mean, I, I, was, I was a little boy and I used to see, you know, the deals going on, the transactions taking place. And as a little boy, I could still remember it. I could still remember it, vivid. And they would yell out their substance names, make the sales, and if you would be behind them, you you pay you pretty you pretty much watch the sale go on, and you see through your rearview mirror, and there was people coming from Jersey and from all over from Delaware, buying the stuff and leaving. And to my understanding, they weren't buying one or two, like nickel bags. No, they were buying bundles. They were buying onions. They were buying a lot. They would come spend six, several hundred dollars to re-up on their stash. This particular cluster right here has had a lot of bloodshed. I also experienced my fair share of um, loss in this area. Um, I had an uncle that passed away on this block coming up. He was gunned down. I know a lot of other friends and friends of friends who four blocks to my right and five, six, seven, eight blocks to my left in every other block or if not every block, there was shootings. And multiple people died in all of these blocks. Multiple, multiple people passed it all away. From this corner to the corner of my left to the next block to the corner behind me to the block that we just left. Like, that's true story, true story. Residents from around here will be able to verify that. And like I said, there was different generations. So I was born in 88 and 88 was probably the prime, was probably the highlight. So I was a baby. I couldn't really tell you guys what it was like from when I was a baby, but I do recall the 90s. And there's still an essence of activity going on around here, but due to technology and the eye in the sky and all that stuff going on, people have got more hip to conducting business differently. And there was a bunch of garages here on my right, which also not only used to sell junk, they used to sell like a, like, like yard sale type of flea market junk, like reuse secondhand junk. But 
They just sell substances from the garages too. They were rinky dink garages. That's why the city knocked them down. This was Nesty's block. Rest in peace, Nesty. Little guy with a big heart. He was a dwarf, but he used to get a lot of money. He used to be a very presentable young character. He used to have a lot of toys, two adult toys. Banshees, dirt bikes, nice cars, nice trucks, scooters. He used to spend a lot of money. And they gunned him down several years ago. Probably, let's say seven, eight, nine years ago, give or take. This was his house right here on the corner on my left-hand side. This one right here. That was his house, if I remember correctly. And this block, again, this will be another block that you will walk through it and there'll be 20 people on, on the left. 20 people on the right. A lot of these little blocks were like that. And it's the Hispanic community. The Hispanic community is 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 pretty um pretty supportive of each other to an extent. You hear me? I say to an extent. But Latinos stick together. Latinos unidos, united. They stay together, you know what I mean? So when you drive through the block, you got 20 dudes just staring at you like owls and if you don't know them and you're not from around there they could tell that you know what I mean and the cops know of all of this they knew of it they know of it that's why they coined this neighborhood the Badlands there was a lieutenant who used to cover this area back in the day and he coined it the Badlands Because of the crime, the open air substance market. There's a car double parked in front of us, so I'm not even going to go straight. I'm just going to go right. We just passed the lighthouse. And it's not even a typical lighthouse like you would imagine. Look at the sky. The sky looks beautiful. It's like orange, pink, purple, and like several different shades. I can go straight. I can go left. I'm going to go straight. Let's make this right hand turn on mutter. Again, this was one of those blocks that you would come through. Activity for days. Most folks are no longer here. They're either in prison. They're either deceased. They moved on. Some of them matured up and got out of the game. Started raising families of their own. Some of them relocated. They left Philly. And some of them, the descendants, took over the business. So since today, it's a bit breezier. It's not really... Not a hot summer day. If you come through this block on a hot summer day, you'll probably have 15 people on the left, 15 people on the right. But there'll be kids, there'll be you know, the mothers, the fathers, there'll be people just hanging out. But look, if we come to the corner, we got several people just posted up on the corner. This is another corner that used to have a lot of shootings. I remember this lady from this block. I don't remember her name, but I remember her face somewhat. She lived at the corner of the block. If I recall, if my memory serves me well, she had like 21 children. She had a lot of kids and all her kids were all grown. You know, she, she was having them, I guess, early on. And she had like her whole, her, her own little army of, of goons because they were all her kids. You know what I mean? She had sons, a bunch of sons and a bunch of daughters. I think this was back when I was like 11, 10, 11. I can't recall accordingly, but right here on my left-hand side, I believe she lives right here on this corner. She had a bunch of kids. I don't know if I'm over-exaggerating. I could have swore it was 21, like 20 or 21 kids. I know that sounds like a lot of kids, right? But yeah, it was a lot of kids. She had a lot of kids and they all protected her, you know, as they should. Sini's grocery store on our left or Sunny. Speaking of grocery store, we can make a left here and then maybe we'll make another left. 
Let's make this left on the 2900 block of Palesorp. A buddy of mine. I didn't know him personally, but I shook his hand dozens of times. He always acknowledged me. He used to make my food. I knew him, his pop. I knew his mom. And I knew his uh, wife. I knew his uh, kid. I knew them because they owned a store over here. And for years when I used to hang out here on Hancock and Cambria, I used to eat from his store. And he knew my order to the T. And I haven't seen him in quite some time. The last time I saw him was literally like, I would say like a year before he passed away. I saw him at Walmart. And he saw me, yo, what's up? I haven't seen you in a while. No more cheesesteak? <laughs> I'm like, nah, nah, bro. You know, I was traveling the country, this, that, and the third. He said, where? Really? Yes, that's, that's what's up. Right? And um, I found out that he got gunned down right here in the store on my left-hand side. This is his store. That was his pop store. Him and his pop both got shot. And it's closed. That's a shame. They have a... Uh, a little teddy bear outside. But I don't know if they ever open up the business again because, you know. Oh, snap. They open up a little business here. The snack plug. Oh, I didn't even peep that. That hasn't been open in forever, ever, 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 ever. Wow. Plenty of people got gunned down on this corner, too. In my younger years, I used to hang around this neighborhood. I had family in this neighborhood. I had friends. I still got a couple homies that still live in this neighborhood. However, I don't hang out as often as I used to when I was a youngster. There used to be a garage right here on my left, that white garage. It was called, um, I forgot what it was called, but it was owned by some dude named Harry. Was it called Harry's Garage? I don't know. All I know is he had some cool cars and he had an actual lowrider. Now, if you're from the East Coast, lowriders, you know that they're not as common as they are in the West Coast. If, you, if, if you're from Cali or from Arizona or from one of them states where you're fortunate and blessed enough to see lowriders every other day or every weekend on, on, on Sunset Boulevard or something, then lowriders are nothing to you. But over here, you'd be lucky if every five, six years you see something with hydraulics because nobody really builds them over here. Nobody services them, et cetera, et cetera. He had a really beautiful color shifting Impala, like a 1964 Impala lowrider with the hydraulics, with the switches and everything. He had a nice vehicle. He had a couple other ones too, but I remember him for having a lowrider. I thought that was so cool. Still to this day, I wouldn't mind one. This bar on the left, I know the owners of the bar. When, when you live in an area for so long, you kind of, you get to know everybody's face. You get to know them um, either, you know, personally, you talk to them, you cross paths with them, you shake hands with them. Let's make this right on Lehigh Avenue. If we kept going straight, we would end up in West Kensington. But right now, we're just going to continue cruising through Fairhill. I'm going to make this right-hand turn on Hancock Street. Yeah, you get to know all different... Uh, folks from the area I think buddy on my right is urinating on the side of the laundromat he's marking his territory you notice how he didn't pick a discreet location though he just went like right up on the side of the building I would at least pick like a little corner next to a dumpster or something I guess when you gotta go you gotta go I'm going to make this left-hand turn on Somerset. Oh, they turn into Hancock Studios? Oh, wow. Man. It's incredible the amount of, of renovations they did around here. Bringing a lot of these old buildings back to life. All right, we're at second and Somerset. I can go straight or I can go left. Let's go left. See second and Lehigh. Then we'll make a right on Lehigh. And then probably cruise to the other portion of Fairhill for a bit. Again, if you're new to the channel, I've covered this neighborhood plenty of times. 
this is probably one of the between Kensington and Fairhill and the runner up would probably be Hunting Park I've covered these areas in abundance so there's a lot of Fairhill on my channel and that's because these are the areas that I recall the most this is where I grew up that's where I spent most of my life at all of my life you know so it's not like I was in different parts of the city and then I came here at a later part of my life. No, I spent my whole life at this intersection right here. When I was born, I probably came through here as a baby. Seriously. I'm gonna make this right-hand turn at Lehigh Avenue. McDonald's on my left. There's a Checkers on my left, which is closed. This right hand turn on American Street. We have a little plaza on our right. The Pastrana Plaza. I had an uncle that passed away. He was, um, when he passed away, he was like 360 pounds. But I believe he, he weighed more. He was like 6'4". He wasn't fit but he was like big so he was kind of like an intimidating big well i was told that they used him as a bodyguard for push drana who owned that plaza back in the day yeah he passed away though he was a big guy so i guess that's why they wanted him as a bodyguard back in the day talking about probably late 80s early 90s Yo, there's a cop on my right, a cop on my left, and there was a cop behind me. They're about to sting. They're about to sting something. They're, they're, they're parked on all three different corners, and I peeped that immediately. Now, normally, raid days are Tuesdays and Thursdays, traditionally, back in the past. But who knows if they switched it up? They could have switched it up, because if everybody knows raid days are Tuesdays and Thursdays, then it's like... You know, why not catch them off guard and hit them on a day that we don't, that they don't think that we're going to operate? Normally, around the corner on American Street is where all the cops, they meet up at when they want to do a raid. You'll drive by on any given day when they're planning and plotting, and there'll be like 10, 15 cop cars all in like a group, and they're all out there. And I guess they're talking about how they're going to hit the location. I've witnessed several raids in my life. You go through a block, you don't even know what's happening, and boom, 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 you see they got the whole thing where they knocking the door down, they got big guns, you got the the, the whole team, and they run into people's houses, and yeah, it's happened, it's happened. In this part of Philadelphia, it's almost as if we're on 3rd and Cambria. <clears throat> If people in your family didn't utilize substances or sell or distribute substances, you knew somebody's family. Whether it was your neighbor, your friend, your friend's father, your friend's mother, uncle, aunt, brother, sister, somebody got down. They got down with the get down. And it was just the norm. It was accepted. Like we knew who, you know, let's say if somebody's name example was Boogie. We knew, oh, Boogie, that's, that's Boogie's cor corner. And that was his nickname. That's just an example. I'm not going to give any actual nicknames to, to, to folks, but we're at 3rd in Indiana, <clears throat> which is a, a popular, famous corner in uh, Fairhill. If you didn't know, most of you know, but there was a book written about this corner and the other corner, two blocks to my left. But you know, if it was Papo's Corner, they're like, "Yo, that's yo, that's Papo's Corner, yo." No, you, no, you can't be out here. If it was Tony's co Corner, nah, bro. Like this is Tony's spot, and people like really claim blocks, and it's a shame because if you think about it, you don't own the block. <laughs> you don't own the actual block. You don't own the actual street or nothing. But because of the respect that you had or the fear that you instilled in people. Nobody said nothing. Look, there's a rest in peace memorial right there in front of us. On my right-hand side, that white box, there's candles and there's a cross. Somebody passed away, and, and, and that's new. That's new. Throughout my life, man, if I've had, no joke, if I had 
a dollar for every one of those boxes I've seen, I've had over 100, 200 bucks. I've seen so many memorials on every other corner. I end up becoming desensitized, desensitized to it. And, and, it, and it sucks. It's not because I choose to. I've been going to funerals since I was so young, at a young age. It got to the point where I stopped going to fun- funerals because I couldn't cry no more. It's like you don't want to just stand over someone's casket cold-hearted while everybody's crying and mourning. And, and you just, you're just accustomed to it. We're at 4th in Indiana. You just become accustomed to it. You, you know, you become cold. By the time I was, I was 18, I've been through a dozen or two dozen funerals. You know, I've seen a lot of people from family, friends, and loved ones. Just, they're here one day, and the next day, they're not. And I know there's some folks that grew up in the suburbs where they don't have to experience loss. And if they experience loss, it's because of old age. It's their grandma passes away, or their grandfather passes away, or, you know, it might be something, it might be something like cancer related or something, but very rarely it's for gun violence. Around here, it was for gun violence. It was people was getting shot. Still to this day, people getting shot every other day, people getting shot. We're coming up to uh, Popeye's Chicken. Somebody was gunned down in Popeye's Chicken parking lot. He was only 19. He got gunned down in his car. Two other people in the car with him also got shot too. That's right up the block, the next block from us. We're on this block. We go to the next block. At the end of the next block, there's a Popeye's. He got gunned down and he worked in Popeye's. I think he was like, like, I don't know. He was too young to be a manager, but he was a staff member in Popeye's. He got gunned down right in, in the parking lot in front of his job. On my left-hand side, Popeye's is in front of us. One block to our left is Rite Aid. Somebody got killed in front of Rite Aid. Three blocks to my right, next to this Popeye's, there's a Dunkin' Donuts. The manager got executed in the back of the Dunkin' Donuts. Three blocks to my right. So this is like this this, this little, so we're gonna come here. This is um, Julio de Burgos on my right-hand side. We're approaching Lehigh Avenue. Right here, this Popeye's. Do you see this Popeye's chicken on my left? It was once a Geno's burger spot back in the day. Shout out to my OG, the, the original old heads from the channel that they say, yo, tune, there used to be a Geno's back in the day. I was too young to remember, but I remember when it was Churchy's chicken. Right here, right, I'm gonna make this left. Right here, that Popeye's, the young man lost his life. That was probably like two years ago. Like three and a half years ago, or three years ago, Somebody got shot right out front of this Rite Aid. People cross the street from this Rite Aid to the checkers and on a Citizens app, someone got robbed right here in the middle of the street. Then I'm gonna make a U-turn, right? I'm gonna make a U-turn. So you got somebody that, that passed away right there on Rite Aid. You got somebody that passed away right here on, on Popeyes, right? Three blocks in front of us, there's a Dunkin' Donuts and the manager, she was gunned down within the last three and a half, three, three years. She was gunned down. They, they ro- the, the guy robbed the place, and he also was responsible for a murder in New York. He had murdered somebody in New York, then he came here and he robbed that Dunkin' Donuts, and he killed her. And that's just a few that I'm naming off the back that made headlines. There's plenty that didn't make headlines. There's plenty that was before my time. Right now we're on 5th and Lehigh. As you can see, night falls here, it's getting very dark. The sun's setting, so you can't see as much detail as you may wanna see. Right here on my left hand side, that Dunkin' Donuts. You're gonna see it in three, Two, one, Dunkin' Donuts. We're gonna make this left. Right here. And she had just moved to Philadelphia. She wasn't from Philly. She was not from Philly. I repeat, she was not from Philly. She moved here to my understanding for a better life. She got a job and she was trying to make money. And they took her life, cut her life short. And she was at work. 
How does that work? How do you lose your life at work? It sucks, man. So a lot of the youngsters around here, including myself when I was growing up, we, we grew up very numb to it. Very numb. Every few passings will affect us differently. If it was like somebody super close to us, close loved one, close family member, close friend. But for the most part, nine times out of 10, when you hear somebody pass away, you're like, damn, yo, you heard this person pass away? Word? Yeah, man. Wow, that, that sucks, bro. And then they just move on with their life, and that's it. And that's all you remember the person. You like, oh, wow, I remember, yo, you heard this person pass away, and it just gets passed on. And everybody learns that this person passed away, and that's it. And until it affects them, it doesn't matter. Until it affects them, it will not matter. And it's just a never-ending cycle. Never-ending cycle. Nothing to be proud of, but it's just a little bit of clarification. You could be standing out on the corner one minute and then the next minute somebody drives by shooting. You could be standing out on the corner talking with your friends. The next minute a car pulls up, jumps out and pulls guns out and says, everybody run your pockets. And And just robs everybody. You could be in a tent shop getting your vehicle tinted and the shop can get held up and you getting robbed with it. True story. It's that serious, man. Recently, matter of fact, remember we just passed McDonald's and we passed uh, Checkers? Like two weeks ago to my understanding, I think like two weeks ago to my knowledge, maybe one week ago. The McDonald's got robbed, the drive-thru. And that wasn't the only time they robbed that McDonald's. That McDonald's, they pulled up to it, and they went in the drive-thru, and they pulled out a gun and said, give me the register. And obviously, the staff member isn't going to argue, not for no McDonald's money. That 10, 11, 12 bucks an hour is not going to make me argue with you. Listen, you, you, want some, you want some food with it? Would you like me to make you a milkshake? Come on, let me let me know. I will hook it up. I'll give you barbecue sauce. I'll give you ketchup. You need you want to supersize that? Listen, matter of fact, you want me to help you? Because I will help you. Because I'm not going to argue over this McDonald's money. So they gave up the register. And it was on the news. They robbed the McDonald's right here. From the drive-thru, though. Like, they didn't even rob the store. So how do you rob it in a vehicle? Now, I'm assuming the vehicle was a stolen. It, it better have been a stolen vehicle. And not been your own personal vehicle. Three blocks to my right on Dolphin Street, about a year ago, there was a lady, she had her throat sliced. Right here on Dolphin, on um, third, third and Dolphin. Like two minutes behind me, she had her throat sliced. Somebody went up and sliced her throat. I mean, I don't, I, I don't have answers for why this stuff happens, but it just happens. I had a buddy, a childhood buddy uh, from elementary school. His name was George. This was his block on my right-hand side. Um, his mom and his sister and his niece and all of them, they're, they're, they're still in the same neighborhood, to my, to my knowledge. Um, his name was Georgie, and he got gunned down, too. He got gunned down when he was young, when he was like 17, 18, maybe 19. And he got gunned down. I think there was another person that was slashed around Rite Aid too. Oh, about a year, year and a half ago. Somebody got slashed. I'm gonna make this right hand turn on Lehigh Avenue. I was about to say, what are all those people doing standing at that bus stop with their arms crossed? Why are they staring? And it's because they put like a vinyl wrap with a bunch of people standing under the bus stop with their arms crossed staring. <laughs> yeah, this is the McDonald's right here. So let me give you a little bit of um, in, insider perspective on if, I'm not saying if you would want to, but if you would want to see how they, they did it. This is the one they robbed. And like I said, I think it happened a few years ago too. This is the only time they did it, but they did it a week ago and it was on the news. This is the drive through They came through here, right? You know, like any traditional drive through They got in line. I don't know if they ordered anything or if they went straight to the window. 
but I'm going to try to point it to the drive through window so you can see. Right here. drive through window. You see the drive through window right here on my left? And I don't know if it was the first window or the second one. It had to be the first window. And there's cameras. There's a ton of cameras here. And not only is there cameras, but they usually have an armed security guard here. There's usually a guy in there with a firearm and the vest, and he walks the parking lot. So I don't know how they managed to get away with that. But they did. Yup. And the story goes on, man. The story goes on. My buddy Tone, my buddy Tone's father, shout out to Tone. Tone's a good dude. His pop got shot one block to my right. Mm-hmm. I think he took a bullet to the head, but he recovered. He recovered slowly but surely, but his, his father lived. Right here on Pailthor Street. Shout out to Tone. Tone and Durock and the whole gang. But his, but his, his, his pop got caught in the crossfire too. Yeah, man. It is no joke. It's, it's, it's no joke. And this is just the story of one inner city neighborhood. Remember, Philadelphia got over 100 hoods. Over 170 Philadelphia neighborhoods. Over 50 well-known neighborhoods. Over 150 uh, 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 more, uh, I would say, loosely known neighborhoods. And then there's a couple that like most people don't even know that exists. So last time I counted, it was around 170. This is the hospital that I was born at on my right-hand side, Episcopal Hospital, which is located in West Kensington. So I was born in West Kensington. I, I, four minutes up the block on my left is where the whole crisis is at. If, if we go a block or two in front of us, then we'll hit Kensington Avenue, and that's where you know, the open-air market is. But I was born right here on my right-hand side. Hence why... These are the streets that I hung out on. It's like, it's, it's what I knew. It's what I know still to this day. It's, it's home. I don't have to be here for it to feel like home. I know this place like the back of my hand. I know all the back blocks, all the shortcuts. I can beat traffic when there's traffic. Because I know how to get around without using a GPS. You know what I mean? So. But if you want to check out some more videos in this neighborhood, feel free to explore my channel. I promise you, there's plenty of other footage covering the Fairhill Badlands neighborhood.